Why do I love physics? Why am I a huge fan of science in general? Or, to put it in that way, why do so many people hate physics? Why do so many people bear an antagonism towards science and believe it to be boring and not fascinating at all? I believe it's because of the system of how science is taught. Students are urged to memorize formulas, not to understand them by heart and to understand their true beauty. It's like forcing little children to learn music theory and how to handle notes, but never letting them hear actual music. The sad reality of today's education denies our children the grasp of maths and physics being something truly catching and intriguing. Of course, formulas are important, and I don't want to abolish maths lessons teaching this stuff at all. I rather would suggest making one lesson every few weeks in which children are taught that maths and physics are not only formulas, but also interesting natural phenomena which can really make you think about the nature of the universe itself. In this video, I want to show you some aspects of physics which once made me fall in love with this subject. One aspect I believe to be really interesting is the physics of elementary particles, also called quantum physics. Quantum physics asks, what do we consist of? What are the basic things that build up the human body and the, the entire life and everything we have in our universe? If you ask someone on the pavement what we consist of, you will probably receive something like atoms. But of course, as you might know, we can split atoms further up. So if we split an atom up or if we just have a closer look, we've got the core and the shell. In the shell, there are electrons. In the core, there's a proton or there are protons and neutrons. Um, but can we split protons and neutrons even further up? Well, yes, we can. If we take a proton and split it up, there are things in there called quarks. In one proton, there, is, oh, there are two up quarks and one down quark. In a neutron, there are two down quarks and one up quark. So we can split up protons and neutrons, this is the so-called nucleons, even further into quarks. And quarks, as well as the electron is, are elementary particles. So, according to the current knowledge of science, we cannot split these particles further up. Of course, there are some theories like string theory and so on, but probably, according to the current situation of science, this is what we consist of. Quarks. And I think this is one thing which fascinates me about science. So you have these things, these quarks, which do not have any kind of intelligence at all for themselves. And then you just take a few quarks, put them together, and they uh, give something like a human, a person with intelligence, a person with... Uh, a person who can take decisions, a person who has opinions on subjects, a person who can have feelings. All this just consists of these quarks who do not have feelings at all. These quarks have some physical properties like they have mass and quantum particles usually have spin and so on. These are all quantum uh, attributes we can, well, we can say these particles have but they don't have any kind of intelligence and they don't have any kind of feelings. It's like putting billions and billions of uh, things together which don't have any life in them and this resulting in something wonderful like a human or like, like an animal or like even bacteria. I mean, bacteria are something like... They have so many particles in there and all these particles don't have any intelligence at all but the bacteria have intelligence and they can and now we're in biology and they can settle together to make a to make an entire human and this is something i find fascinating about science you take some small pieces which don't have any kind of intelligence for themselves and put them together in the right way and you have something fascinating and wonderful like a human but when it comes to quantum mechanics and quantum physics there are 
many more fascinating things. For example, uh, if we look at the world of the small things, if we look at the quantum world, uh, there is a property that a particle can be at several places at once. So at one specific time, for example, an electron can be at infinitely many places altogether. So it is at all places at the same time, at one time. And this is called quantum superposition. Um, so a particle can be in several states uh, at the same time, simultaneously. But this is only possible as long as we do not have a look at the particle. So um, you can imagine it like that. Imagine the electron being at several places at once as long as we do not look at the particle, at the electron. As soon as we have a look at the electron, the electron has to decide where it is. And this is quantum superposition. Particles in, in the quantum world are at several places at once and they do not have to decide where they actually are. Um, they do not have this, uh, they don't have to decide this before we have a look at them. So if we look at an electron and we see it somewhere, this is only where it decided it to be at the moment we looked at the electron. And this is quantum superposition. And all these kind of stuff, uh, or all these kind of things, is only possible in the quantum world. So you cannot imagine something like a pen or like a cat being in a superposition. Well, you can't imagine a pen uh, being on the left hand of you and at the same time on the right hand of you. This is nothing which makes sense in the real world. But in quantum mechanics it makes sense. And of course this can be described by really complicated equations, but I think these equations kind of deny the true beauty of it. So of course these equations are crucial to understand what is going on. But I think to introduce in this topic we shouldn't use equations, we just should tell our students what's happening and that there is something magical like superposition which says that particles can be at one time at several places at once and I think this is really fascinating. Or some other things which can be explained by quantum mechanics like nuclear fusion or nuclear fission. Why does the sun work? The sun works uh, because there is nuclear fusion in the sun. So the sun takes two hydrogen atoms and fuses them to two helium atoms and this gives or this releases energy according to the energy equation E equals mc squared by Albert Einstein and this is why the sun is giving us on earth heat because of nuclear fusion and this can be explained by quantum physics. Um, yes and talking about stars there is one more interesting thing we can talk about. Namely, what do stars do after they die? What do stars do after they don't have energy anymore to burn? And this is a question of quantum physics at, uh, at, on, the, on the one hand side and of astronomy on the other side. And this is what I'm going to talk about in part two.